Every year, we release a tutorial for a Christmas tree created using RailClone. In fact, this is now the fourth of these tree tutorials. This time round, we're going to demonstrate how to make this rather festively shaped building from just three pieces of source geometry. As always, along the way, you'll learn some useful RailClone tips, including the use of the conditional and material operators, RailClone color maps, clipping, deform modes, and more. You might wonder why you'd want to create a building like this, but of course the techniques shown in this video can be very useful for creating architecture that's a much more orthodox shape. This tutorial is also significant for another reason. In RailClone 4, we made the free version more powerful by enabling the vertical deform modes and the ability to distribute on non-flat splines. That means this tutorial is fully compatible with RailClone Lite, which can be downloaded from our website. In this scene, we're going to start with three segments that will become our building. As you can see, the geometry is very simple. We have two sections that we will randomize to make the majority of the building, one of which has a window and one of which just simple cladding. The third piece will be used at the start and the end of the spline where windows or a balcony would be inappropriate. The boards themselves each have a material ID of between 8 and 14 assigned, so that they use slightly different colour corrected versions of a wood cladding material. We'll randomise these IDs using a material operator later. There are also some polygons that have been assigned a V-Ray light material to add a bit of illumination to the inside of the building and on top of the facade for some uplighting. These will be randomised too, but using rail clone colour. So as always, Pivot placement is very important. Generally speaking, you don't need to worry about the pivot's position on the x-axis because RailClone's automatic placement takes care of that for you. But I will adjust the pivot on the z-axis because I want the top of the segment, ignoring this ledge, to align to the top of the spline. Similarly, on the y-axis, I would like the front wall to align to the spline as well. So I move the pivot forward and up so that they jigsaw together correctly. So we're nearly ready to create the rail clone object. But before I do, a quick word about using Max's helix spline objects with rail clone. When using this primitive, you might find you don't get the smooth deformations you'd expect. And that's because Max's helix spline object outputs segments by default, which has their type set to line instead of curve, rather unhelpfully. You can easily fix this by adding a normalized spline modifier and then tweaking the spacing. And so with all the segments in the spline ready, it's time to build the rail clone object. Create a new rail clone object, go to the modify panel and open the style editor. Drag in a new linear generator. This will control the rules for the whole building. Add a new spline node and use it to pick the helix from the scene. Wire the spline node to the generator's spline input. Create a new segment node and use it to pick the default glass geometry from the scene. Wire the segment to the default input. We can now control how this sits on the spline using the alignment settings. Changing Z alignment to pivot will move the segment down so that it sits just below the spline. Change Y alignment to pivot too so that the spline now defines the front of the building. You will see some strange rotation happening as the segments ascend the building. This is because they're banking to follow the curvature of the helix. Fortunately, we can easily fix this using the segments deform features, an option that's only recently become available for users of the free light version of RailClone. By changing the deform mode to vertical, we correct the rotation. But more importantly, the vertical elements of the mesh remain upright, while the horizontal elements continue to follow the spline. This is a very useful mode, especially for things like banisters and handrails. And best of all, now anyone can use it. So moving on, let's add another facade piece and randomize it with the original. Clone the existing segment to save from having to enter all those settings again, and then use it to pick the default cladding piece. Add a new randomized operator and wire both segments to its input. Wire the random node to the generator's default input. You now have a number of randomized facade elements, but what if we want more windows than clad walls? 
Well to do that you can change the presence settings of the randomised node to easily control the probability of a segment being used. If we take a look at the bottom of this building, because the base of this spline isn't flat, we're going to lose the windows on the bottom floor. To swap windows for something that looks less weird, well slightly less weird, we'll use the conditional operator. This node allows you to choose segments based on certain attributes of a spline such as the material ID, the vertex angle, the length, the type like whether it's a curve or a line, or in this case the position along the spline. Wire a conditional operator between the existing randomised node and a generator. Clone any one of the existing segments and use it to select the top bottom geometry from the scene. Wire this to the conditional node's false input. Enable position and make sure to pick spline from the drop down. Change the mode to greater and increase the percentage until the window sections only start after the first revolution of the helix. Now we'll do the same thing for the top because as the building narrows there's not a lot of space to add a room behind the facade. So add another conditional operator to the default input. Wire the top bottom segment to the false input. Enable position and select spline. This time we'll change the mode to less and then decrease the percentage starting at 100 until you've removed the windows from the desired area at the top of the cone. So far so good. Now we want to add some material randomization to this style. Remember those planks on the facade are currently set to material IDs between 8 and 14. We want to take each one of those in turn and randomize it between the same range every time the segment is used. To do that we'll create a chain of material nodes, one for each ID we want to randomize. So add a new material node to the graph, set the replace material ID and the from value to 8 and then set the to value to 14. Clone this material node 6 more times. That's one time for each of the other material IDs in the range. Wire them all together in series, one after the other. Then, when that's done, for each one go through and increase the replace material ID value by an extra one, starting from 8 of course and finishing at the end by 14. Wire the conditional operator to the first material node in the chain and then wire the final material node in the chain to the generator's default input. Each segment's planks will now be randomised. So the bottom of the building still continues down through the pavement line and that might be okay but just for the sake of neatness let's slice the bottom to level it off. For this you'll need a rectangular spline in the scene aligned flat on the X or the Y axis. Basically everything inside this spline is going to be removed. Then add a new spline node and pick this rectangular spline from the scene. Wire it to the generator's clipping spline input. Go to the generator's clipping settings and change the projection axis to X or Y depending on how you aligned the spline. Change the mode to exclude to slice and remove the geometry inside the spline instead of just keeping it. And actually that's the modelling done. All that remains is to add some randomization to the lights inside the rooms. And to make it look a bit more Christmassy, we're going to tint them red, green or blue, just like tree lights. Open the material editor and find the V-Ray light material you'd like to randomize. Open the V-Ray light material settings and add a rail clone colour map to its colour map slot. First of all we're going to randomize the intensity of the lights and the number that are on or off. To do that enable the tint settings and change the blending mode to multiply. Enable get colour from map random values. A random pixel value selected from a map will now be multiplied by the colours that we'll select above. To make it easy to control we're going to add a gradient ramp. Go into the gradient ramp settings. Go into the gradient ramp settings and change the centre flag to black. The size of this black area controls the probability of a light being turned off. The smaller the area, the more lights are enabled. And of course the opposite is true, so if I make the black area very large, more lights are turned off. 
The light area of the gradient controls the brightness of the lights that are turned on. By using a gradient here we get a nice randomization of intensities. And also feel free to add additional flags as you see fit, because this is an enormously flexible way to control and randomize the values of maps or colors using RailClone. And finally we can change the colors to something more festive. Go back to the RailClone color map and enable the first three map slots, changing the colors to red, green and blue in this case. That's the rail clone section done, but this building has several Christmas trees distributed along the spline. To add them, we'll use Forest Pack's recently introduced spline mode. Clone the existing helix and adjust its two radius values so that the spline is between the edge of the building and the railings. Create a new Forest Pack object using icon mode. Go to the geometry rollout and add a new item. Open the basics library and find the most festive tree that you can. Go to the distribution rollout and change the mode to path. Add the second helix to the path list and set a large spacing for now. The chances are that the tree is way too large. Go back to the geometry rollout and reduce the item's scale. Once this is done, you can go back to the distribution rollout and you can refine that spacing. And finally, to disguise the repetition of what's essentially the same tree, head to the transform rollout and add a little scale and rotation randomization. And that's the end of this part of the tutorial that relates to our Christmas tree building. We now have our spiral building with randomized facades, textures and lights, with different segments used at the start and the end. It's a bit of a weird one, but we hope you've learned some useful tips you can apply to other projects. Before we finish up though, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk a little about the rest of the scene, because it uses some exciting new assets that will be available soon. Nearly the whole scene is created with a rail clone, including the railings, uh, the bus shelter from our previous rail clone tutorial, and of course the buildings. There's also in here a smidge of Forest Pack Pro used for the trees, and some ground debris in the foreground. In fact the trees are assets from the 3D Garden Winter Collection, which integrates really well with Forest Pack so you can easily add them just by selecting them from the library. The buildings though are interesting, they are a sneak preview of a new commercial collection that will be available early next year which we're calling background buildings. I've actually used them rather closer to the camera than they are intended here but I still think they hold up rather well. This collection is going to include over 25 fully parametric tower style buildings. They can have any number of stories and you're not limited to a fixed footprint, instead you simply load a building from the library, then you go to the base objects rollout and then you pick a spline to define the footprint. That's really it, the number of stories is then set from the parameters rollout and it's as easy as that. There are also parameters here that allow you to select from over 50 materials for each building element, options to enable interior lighting and more depending on the style. We really hope you'll find this useful. As I've mentioned, all the buildings in this scene were created using this library. It's a really great way to quickly populate scenes, so keep an eye out for more announcements about this in 2020. And on that note, this was the final video of 2019. We've released over 25 tutorials this year. We hope you've enjoyed them and they've helped you to understand our plugins and make your work easier and more enjoyable. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching and we hope that you'll stay tuned to plenty more episodes and more announcements in the new year.